I'm Nathan Nabb, professor of saxophone at Stephen F. Austin State University. I'm Kim Colavano, professor of clarinet at the University of North Texas. So Nathan, for saxophone, say a student comes to you and they want to know what they need to do to sound better. What would you tell them first? Number one, I think, is, you know, you got to look at the mouthpiece. You know, that's one of the most economical and easiest ways to really get them to sound better immediately. Yeah, that's the same for clarinet. And I notice a lot of students sometimes don't even know that they sh that there's an option besides right. the one that came with the right. clarinet in the first yeah, place. Yeah, they're, they're playing exactly what came in the case with, with the horn when it showed up. Exactly. At the door. That's always one, one of the first things for me. Check to make sure that they're, that they're set up is good, that they're, they're playing on a good mouthpiece, that they're playing on a reed that matches the mouthpiece. Yeah, so when you say that, I assume what you're meaning is a reed and mouthpiece interface and ligature interface that makes it easy to play, right. easy to move the air through the right. horn with a desirable sound quality. Right and that makes response, articulation, basically just makes it easy for a student right. to produce the sound they have in their totally. head. Totally. That's exactly what I mean. And so, you know, when, when, you're, when you're doing this, of course, we have to have kind of the ideal sound or the goal sound in mind. Right. And then the ideal feel. The right, right kind of resistance that can push against without right, it. Right, and play into it right. without it getting loud and yeah. crazy sounding, right. right? But not so resistant that it sounds airy and fuzzy yeah. and, and is just makes it really hard to play. Yeah, it doesn't feel stuffy or anything. So on clarinet, if I have a closer facing mouthpiece, I would use a little bit harder of a reed. And if I yeah. had a more open facing mouthpiece, I would use a little bit softer right. of a reed Absolutely. to get this ideal response. Yeah, if you think about it this way, if the reed is going to flex to the tip of the tip rail, if it's a smaller opening, we need a firmer reed. Right. If it's a larger opening, it'll be more flexible. Exactly. Yeah, right. Okay, well, what about ligature then? How do you choose? Well, just like you're pairing up reeds and mouthpiece, you also need to pair up ligature with your reed and mouthpiece. Right. Um, the silver ligature tends to have a little bit more upper partial, a little more brilliant sound. Mm -hmm. The gold ligature tends to be a little bit warmer, a little more resonant, but kind of more depth of sound. And so, you know, it's about finding the right kind of uh, ligature that facilitates the vibration of the reed, the response, and helps um, create the, the sound that you want. Okay, so here's the big question. Yeah. To patch or right. not to patch? To patch. What do you prefer? I prefer the clear patches. The thinner ones. Yeah. I like the thicker ones. Mm -hmm. I think um, it does probably get a little bit more space in the in the mouth and can change the sound quality slightly. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really more a, a, a feel thing if you like the vibrations of one or the other. I like the thick ones because it's a little different texture under my teeth. Yeah. You like the thin ones. Yep. So the thin ones I use are also made by the Dario, but it is considerably less thick. So there's not as much cushion, um, and it, uh, you know I, I feel that I can really place my teeth firmly on it, mm -hmm. and it gives a real point of stability mm -hmm. for me. Also, I find for students, they like it because it reduces the, some of them don't like the vibration yeah. from the mouthpiece. Absolutely. So the mouthpiece patch can really just help the mouthpiece feel better inside a student's mouth. Right. Okay, mouthpiece cap or not? Mm, uh, cap, always. Always cap. Yeah. <laughs> um, protects the reed. Protects the mouthpiece. Protects the mouthpiece. If you're resting for a long period of time, and you don't cap it, the reed can warp, um, it can dry out. Mm -hmm. All those things are bad news for us. For us too. Yeah. yeah. We're in agreement. Good.